hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous video we discuss some basic concepts related to the solid structure the physics of uh, solids we discuss the categorization of uh, the solids amorphous and crystalline so we concluded that the entire semiconductor okay this category of solids this comes under the crystalline solids that uh, family so here today we are going to discuss some important concepts some important terms related to the structure of crystalline solids okay so let us just have a quick uh, recap of the things in short <coughs> sorry so the solids okay the study of the physics of solids can be done in two ways okay first the classification of solids on the basis of their structure and property we have to study the crystal structure and the property and then the structure of the crystals and their classification further classifying them into various categories into various types okay first the classification of solids which we did amorphous and crystalline isotropic and anisotropic in nature then the study of the crystal structure so i would like you to please watch the previous two videos related to the basic concepts related to the semiconductor physics and the physics of solids <coughs> so the solids depending on their structure and property can be divided into two types amorphous and crystalline so we have already discussed about amorphous it means they do not have any proper pattern or arrangement in their atomic structure they are uh, the, the, their properties they are same throughout the whole solid okay solid material it is the same their mechanical optical magnetic electrical characteristics and properties they are the same throughout whereas the crystalline solids they have a proper regular geometrical pattern arrangement of the atoms atoms molecules ions whatever okay and it extends in three dimensions x y and z axis and this arrangement of atoms it is repeated throughout the entire solid structure okay so the crystalline solids they have a proper geometrical arrangement of atoms in three dimensions which is repeated throughout the entire solid structure it means they have a fixed pattern in which all the atoms molecules or ions are arranged and that simple pattern or that pattern which can be simple or complicated depends and that pattern it is repeated in three dimensions and it makes up the entire solid structure so the crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature the amorphous they are isotropic in nature the crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature it means their mechanical electrical physical <coughs> optical magnetic properties are different in different directions okay so for example their appearance their texture their density their melting point their boiling point their conductivity their mobility it 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 will be different from one point to another and this anisotropic behavior of crystalline solids gives rise to various effects phenomena such as piezoelectric effect hall effect polarization of light when passed through a crystal so we have discussed this in detail in the previous video so please check out that so the important thing is that the semiconductors they fall under the crystalline solid category so that's why it is very important to study the uh, crystalline nature of solids okay so because the semiconductors 
which this whole subject is based on physics of semiconductor devices it falls under the crystalline solid category so it will possess all the characteristics of crystalline solids so that's why this uh, <coughs> study is very important <coughs> So, the study of the crystalline solids, basically the semiconductors here, we are talking about in, uh, in, in, in uh, we have to study them in terms of two things. First, the space lattice and then the unit cell. Defining these two things will clear everything about the crystal structure of the crystalline solid we are talking about. So, first we have to talk about the space lattice of that crystal structure and then the unit cell. So, let us discuss them separately. So, what is a space lattice? <coughs> so, you can uh, imagine a space lattice as a space okay, in 2D or 3D in which way you want to imagine. And then you imagine a group of lines or an array of lines or geometric points on that space. Okay. So, the best way to uh, imagine it is in terms of a graph paper. You have seen the graph paper, the entire graph paper is divided into big squares of equal area, then it is divided into smaller squares. So, you can imagine, a sp it is not exactly like that, but just to imagine the space lattice looks something like that. A space in two dimension or three dimension, actually it is in 3D, but uh, if you want to visualize, it is a space which is divided into lines, equidistant lines or equidistant points. And that, those lines or points, they divide it into equal areas in 2D or equal volumes in 3D. Those points on the space are called as lattice points. So imagine something like this. Just ignore these things, this highlighted things for a while. Just imagine these, uh, this, uh, this big rectangle. It is divided into lines, horizontal and vertical lines, which is divided into this whole large rectangle into smaller rectangles of equal area. It is in two dimension, not in three dimension, it is in two dimension. It has divided it into smaller rectangles of equal area. So, these points, these intersecting points where the two lines horizontal and vertical are intersecting, they are called as lattice points. These lattice points are filled up by atoms, electro, uh, atoms, molecules or ions. Okay? These lattice points are associated with atoms, molecules or ions or a group of atoms. Okay? A single atom or a group of atom. So, each lattice point as I said is associated with a single atom or a group of atoms and it is in a regular manner because crystalline solids have a definite proper arrangement or geometric arrangement of atoms. So, this is these these intersecting points. Okay, all the intersecting points there they act as lattice points and are filled with a single atom or a group of atoms. Okay. So this is the space lattice. Okay. So the way or manner in which these uh, lattice points are filled with atoms it is called as basis okay this is called as basis so you remember these definitions because uh, in the upcoming videos we'll just use this term basis so at that time you should be clear in your head what is basis what is a space lattice uh, what is a unit cell all that okay so the way in which these lattice points are filled with atoms is called as basis so this space lattice combined with basis forms the crystal okay the it forms the entire crystal structure okay so a space lattice is a group of points or a group of horizontal and vertical lines which 
divide or convert any two dimensional uh, space or three dimensional volume into equal areas or equal and identical volumes the intersection of these lines forms lattice points and these lattice points are filled with atoms or group of atoms in a proper geometric manner which is unique to a particular crystal okay now the unit cell what is the unit cell the unit cell is the smallest representative of the crystal or the crystal structure okay in three dimensions so it is the it means that when this unit cell is repeated it will give us the entire crystal structure so it can be thought of as the basic building block the smallest unit structural unit of the crystal just as the the cells in our body is the smallest uh, functioning uh, functional unit similarly the unit cell is the smallest functional or structural unit or building block of the crystal and this has the same structure as the entire crystal structure because when it is repeated in the three dimensions along the x y and z axis the same structure is repeated then it gives us the entire crystal structure so this highlighted portions which are formed by joining these points okay lattice points they are the unit cell it is in 2d okay these are in two dimensions in three dimension it looks something like this okay this is one unit cell of a crystal structure it is called a simple cubic we'll be discussing about the types of crystal structures in a separate video so this is the simple cubic crystal structure this is another it is called as the face centered cubic crystal structure so it is in 3d okay three dimension this is in two dimension the top or plan view as they call so here this uh, z axis is not uh, visible this is in 3d this is in 2d so it is formed by joining the lattice points okay and this is the smallest uh, functional or building block of the crystal structure so when we repeat this same crystal structure this structure when we repeat when we join uh, we stack these crystal structures in the three axis directions x y and z we get the crystal structure okay we stack them one above the other to the left to the right to the bottom to the top in three axis directions x y z we will get the entire crystal structure this is the smallest unit the smallest building block of the crystal structure okay so there are other crystal structures we'll be discussing about them in uh, separate videos so here we have discussed some important terms and concepts related to crystalline structure of the uh, crystalline uh, solids okay first we studied about how the crystal structure is studied one is the space lattice then is the unit cell then we discussed about space lattice which is a group of lines or a geometric points called as lattice points and those lines they divide any space or volume in two dimension three dimension respectively into equal areas equal spaces or equal volumes the unit cell is the smallest representative or building block or smallest structural unit of the crystal structure okay which is formed by joining the lattice points and when it is repeated in x y and z directions it gives us the crystal structure okay so in a next video we'll be discussing about uh, the types of crystal structures which are there and uh, we'll discuss other concepts associated with it so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much